Hello everyone, this is uh, Shadi Reis from NCVH 2023 from Austin. I'm really privileged today to be with Dr. Abdul Husseini. He's an uh, interventional cardiologist, but lately he's, he's in, a, in, a, in a practice where multidisciplinary is very important. Abdul, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be here again. Thank you. So as you know, and you have seen before, cardiology is becoming a multidisciplinary approach because of the complex patient we take care of. You mentioned offline, you are part of the shock team. So tell us about the importance and how you merged in your practice and build that team together. So um, I've been very lucky coming out of fellowship and getting into a very, very busy practice where the top um, uh, cardiology practice in Louisville, Kentucky, which is the biggest city in Kentucky. And we operate like an academic institution primarily. And we have about 13 interventionalists. We have many cardiac surgeons. We, we have pul pulmonologists. We have critical care nurses. And you know, when I came into the practice, they were trying to build a shock team officially because after COVID, they've done a lot of ECMO and they were trying to actually build a shock team and pattern it into uh, the Henry Ford model. And so um, I got drawn right into it because of my large bow access skills. And that's how um, you merged it, I, I merged into it. And, you know, it was very encouraging with the heart failure, advanced heart failure team being very helpful and taking the lead on it. Yeah. Um, it was easy to just gradually blend into it. And since then, we've um, we've done pretty well. And as you said, it's very important because implanting the device or the support is important, but what follows up after is important as well. Yeah. So we alluded to also to the PERT team and uh, how important it is. And it's evolving in the last, it's been there for maybe 2010, yes. but now it's becoming more structured. So how is it in your practice? In my practice, um, we, again, we've We've been lucky to be part of the one of the biggest trials going on right now in the PERT world, um, the Peerless trial with Inari, and um, we also we have all the different products, including Penumbra, um, at our facility. And uh, blending into that, um, I trained at OU where we, we had a ready-to-go PERT team, and when I got to my current practice at Norton. Um, the PERT team was there, but it wasn't well structured, and since then we've been trying to structure it better. Yeah. And especially with the setting that we have a shock team already, and mm -hmm. naturally transitioning that and building a PERT team into the shock team, it will be a natural uh, uh, transition mm -hmm. in the sense that um, Many of the patients that actually need this in our e products or twin penumbra or any kind of from back to me for pulmonary embolism, um, some of them are actually in shock. Yes. And so there's a good overlap between yes. them and having large bow access skills yeah. and knowing how to do these procedures has kind of revolutionized um, the opportunity we give to patients to be able to make the best out of uh, you're their situation. You're bringing a very important point, which is the fact that being a a PERT operator, it doesn't mean that you just go in and do thrombectomy and you walk out. Sometimes that's kind of patient crash and where you have to escalate to VV ECMO or right side impella or something like that. So do you have a protocol in your cath lab or in your program that kind of dictate that, delineated very clearly? Um, no, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. So yeah. when the patient comes into the emergency room, sometimes I get a call, sometimes the pulmonologist gets a call, then calls me, yes. depending on their initial assessment. Sometimes they get TPA first. Um, sometimes we have to do ECMO first, because if they're crashing and uh, so yes. at times they need uh, hemodynamic uh, stabilization up front, then we can go after the clot. And, other times they are in complete shock and you do an echo and you find a clot in transit sitting in the right atrium that you need to grab. And I've had a clot literally escape my aspiration in the right atrium and went straight to the pulmonary artery that I it. had to chase it and grab it, <laughs> which was one of my most dramatic ones. Yes. But um, it's a big overlap and it takes a collaboratory effort yes, yeah. in the sense that um, even interventional radiologists are involved in that as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So a teamwork has taken yeah. a village to such a yeah. program. But thanks for talking to us about the multidisciplinary approach to okay. different aspects in cardiology. Uh, please watch these videos and others on the YouTube channel from CVI. This is Shadi Reis from Austin. Abdul, thanks so much Thank for your time. Thank you so much.